Support for Radio Friends comes from LaBrunere Financial, where they work to ensure a lifetime of financial security for people from all walks of life, from investment services to retirement plans. If you're looking for a trustworthy company that has the experience and knowledge to put your interests first, contact LaBrunere Financial, a community-based investment counseling firm since 1966. and welcome to Radio Friends on Monday, May the 16th. We're going to talk about my favorite topic, and that is gardening in the springtime. And we have Adam Sanders and Lexi Linzeman with us today from Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture. Welcome to Radio Friends. Yeah, thanks for having us here. Uh, Happy to have Lexi here join us today. She's joined our team uh, from St. Louis and now helping us at CCUA. And uh, things are just crazy busy this time Mm -hmm. of year for us and all our programming. And so... We've got the, our fields full out at the Ag Park there next to the Farmer's Market and the MU Healthcare Pavilion and our, our Veterans Urban Farm, taking loads of food to the food pantry, and so it's it's a busy time of year. So what have you got growing right now? Oh my gosh, we're still in our spring season, so all of our cold cro- crops are, it's been a, such a cold, slow spring. It's very been, cold it's been, and very wet. Yes. Yeah. You know, we, we should, I, I'm thankful for the moisture that we're having. Mm-hmm. I just wish that it could be... Um, Turned on yeah. and off when you actually need it the most. Well, we don't have that control, unfortunately. So we just kind of have to roll with the punches. And that's why you plant a big, diverse garden. Yes. So some things do well, some things do poorly. And then you just kind of average it all out in the year. So you've got going what now? So we have radishes. We have some scallions. We have um, broccoli we started now. So just a bunch of crops that we're able to donate to the food bank. That's amazing yeah. that this early in the year you are harvesting, you, harvesting yep. so much. That's right. Yeah, I, I haven't got anything in yet. Uh, it's just been, for me, it's been too wet. Yes. It's just been okay. way too wet and too cold for the tomatoes. We were talking about the tomatoes, Adam. That's right. You said don't put them in the ground until it, it has warmed up enough. Yeah, now we're past Mother's Day. That's kind of a classic um, benchmark. Uh, and that's soil temperature to help get your soil warmed up. If you get them in too early, the cold can kind of stunt them. But I think we're through that that cold area, knock on wood, and so <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're we're heading right into summer. So even if you put them in a little bit late, they will actually catch up with those that were put in earlier, and the growth has been. They started. need that heat. They need the heat. Yeah, so that's like our, our programming is helping people take those steps in their daily life. We do a lot of home garden mentoring with families, about 100 families we work with across town. We have field trips out to our, our, our urban farms with the public schools. We t- teach at the schools. So we have a lot going on uh, throughout the year. And so it's so what, what is the most important bit of information and message that you want to get across to our listeners and viewers today? Yes, we want to get across that we are doing things that I have not seen anywhere else where we are representing programs that everyone deserves food, food is fuel, food is medicine, and our programs, by supporting them, you're helping a variety of people, of veterans, refugees, kids, seniors, therapy gardens. We have such a wide variety that by investing in us and putting in our rows or 1200 for to sponsor or donating to us we're able to provide food for families and friends everywhere in Colombia. yeah yeah every year we do our, our big row sponsorship campaign and our goal this year is 125 yes. rows it's our biggest goal we've ever had so those row sponsorships that come in take food to the food pantry and teach kids and teach people in their backyard. So that's a critical part of our funding mm-hmm. and just so grateful for the community here who, who's seen this and seen, wow, if we invest in our local food system, yes. we can help change the game and help make food more abundant and the skills to grow it. How much food do you anticipate you will be growing and donating this season? So last year we hit 38,000 pounds of produce to the food bank, and that seems like a large number, but when you actually put it into perspective, if each, you know, if you have a pound of spinach and that's a basketball, and then you fill all of the stadium with basketballs, that's how much food we donated last year. So we hope to fill the stadium. Filling the stadium with fresh produce for those who need it. And now, I want you to put that in perspective. Yeah. You're filling a stadium with fresh produce yep. on how much ground are you growing that on? Yeah, that's across our, our urban farm and on college and next to the ARC uh, there. It's a little, about, a little over an acre. It doesn't all come on the same day. Right. Yeah, that's, right. that's the, that's the, 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 the 
<laughs> the joy of it is that with working with the food bank is they send their truck out to us once or twice a week. Yes. And so we are always loading them full, and that goes straight to the central pantry. And we have several other partners, the VA Hospital, mm -hmm. Patriot Place, Welcome Home. Uh, and we're, we're doing more and more. As we grow more food, we're looking for more partners. We don't, we don't do any program by ourselves. Everything we do, we do with strategic partners. But what is so amazing is in just a little bit more than an acre of land, mm -hmm. you are producing all tons and tons of produce every year. That's right. Yes. That's by, on our spot. But then we also teach people how to do that in their own backyard and bringing compost to their house and, yes. and the skills and the practice and not just learning how to garden, but learning how to learn in a garden. Teach people how to read the timing of the planting schedule and to identify weeds and pests. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot to learn. That's a lifelong passion that we know a lot of friends of, of all ages who just love it. That's what gets and them there, drive, wake yeah, up in the morning. There, there's, there's something about working in the garden, working in the soil mm -hmm. that brings out a a, a, a wonderful feeling in your spirit yes. and in your body. That's right. To, to me, it does. Just to be able to smell the earth. Yes. There's nothing like smelling that warm soil when you're working in it. Yeah. Getting it underneath your fingernails, your hands all dirty and muddy. It's it it feels good. Yeah. It, it it's like a it's a tonic. Mm -hmm. And then that cascades into you're harvesting the vegetables and more than likely you're going to eat those vegetables or give them away or put them in dishes. And then that obtains to your health as well. And when we eat better, we feel better and then we're able to perform better and then just be nicer to each yeah, other and not yeah. react right away. So I think having a full belly of fresh vegetables and food just And really, giving it away. Yes. It feels so good to grow more than what you can actually yes. use yourself. Oh my gosh, yes. And to give it away to people. That's right. Yeah. It that's feels right. good. Gardening is a life of abundance. If you've got tomatoes, you've got a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> and that yeah, you put you in a spot to be generous with your friends, your neighbors, the food pantry, if they mm -hmm. have a program as well. So if you in your garden this season have surplus, the food pantry can take that. Yeah. And so yeah. they've got more information on their website. Our website's ColumbiaUrbanAg.org. Uh, there's tons of information about all our programming we do, our volunteer opportunities, yes. opportunities to sponsor a row, opportunity, our special projects we have coming up. Uh, events we have coming through the summer. So there's a lot going on. And, okay. Uh, and we're also at, right, we share the, the space there with the farmer's market. They're there every Saturday. It's a little food festival every Saturday. Yeah. So folks who have not been out to see the new place, come check it out. It's awesome. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you do anything on how to uh, keep the little critters out of the garden? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fencing and all yeah. sorts of strategies. Deer fencing. Polyline. But then I, I feel like sometimes I need to just grow an extra garden for the deer and for yeah. the raccoon. You could do that. That would work. <laughs> I think that would work really well. All right. Because they need their food too. Yeah. yeah. They like the abundance. Just like Everybody needs food. One year I got so upset with them. They ate all the lettuce and spinach I had. But it's like, well, you know what? They need the food, too. Yeah. That's right. And Everybody they were there before we were. And that's something that we want to do as well is we're working on this multi-purpose building with a bunch of our partners. And okay. And we hope to just seed the plate all the way. All right. So you can go to www.columbiaurbanag.org. Uh, www.columbiaurbanag.org. Www .org. Thank you so much yes. for Thanks coming by. Thank you. Okay. It's a pleasure. I enjoyed chatting with Thank both of you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yes.